Hey YouTube, how's it going? Yak Science here with another OChem video. Topic today is reactions with Grignard reagents. It's one of my favorites, so stay tuned. Um, first of all, why are Grignard reagents cool? Grignard reagents are cool because A, they let us form new carbon-carbon bonds, which is very rare in OChem and it's awesome. Um, another reason, we can reduce carbon yields to, to alcohols using Grignard reagents. And finally, we get to see how carbon could be a nucleophile, which is something we've not seen in any of the videos thus far. So let's dive right in. First of all, what is a Grignard reagent? A Grignard reagent uh, is essentially a type of organometallic compound. What do we mean by that? A carbon bonded to a metal. It's a carbon metal bond. So let's see how we make a Grignard reagent. So let's say we have an alkyl halide just like this, and we put it in the presence of magnesium and diethyl ether. This is how you're going to make your Grignard reagents in all cases, okay? Take, take your substrate, react it with magnesium and diethyl ether, and out pops um, the Grignard reagent, and it looks something like this. Notice how the magnesium sort of wedged its way between the carbon and the, and the bromine? That's normal, and that's, that's what... Uh, Grignard reagents look like. Um, they won't all look exactly like this, but the magnesium will be between the halogen and the carbon. So now let's go over some housekeeping rules. What things can become Grignard reagents? Because not everything. Uh, remember I used a bromine here? So the rule is, in terms of that halogen, bromine, chlorine, and iodine could become Grignard reagents. Fluorine cannot. Okay, Fluorine does not participate in Grignard reagents. Uh, other, other rules for what can become a Grignard reagents, alkyl halides, vinyl halides, and aryl halides can all become Grignard reagents uh, in the presence of magnesium and diethyl ether, just like we showed uh, before, as long as the halogen, right, the halide part, is not fluorine. That's be chlorine, iodine, or bromine. Okay? And by the way, just to go over these, in case, in case you're a little unsure about these, a vinyl halide looks something like this, right? You have a carbon-carbon pi bond, and then you have a bromine, chlorine, and iodine attached over here. And aryl refers to attachment to a benzene ring. All right, so if we have benzene and bromine coming off, that could become a Grignard reagent as well. Okay. So what's so special about the Grignard reagent? We talked about it briefly in the beginning. I want to look a little deeper into it. Let's look at a Grignard reagent again. I don't know why I keep using this one. There are millions out there, but this one seems easy enough. What's really special about this carbon metal bond, right? That's why this is called an organometallic compound, because there's a carbon metal bond. What's so special about this bond is that because of the electronegativity difference between carbon and magnesium, we can almost think of this, almost think of this as an ionic bond where both of these electrons in the bond belong to carbon. And that would give carbon a negative formal charge. Kind of looks like a smiley face there, sorry. <laughs> um, but hope that didn't distract you. Um, these, the fact that these electrons are much closer to carbon than to magnesium give carbon nucleophilic character. You can almost think of the carbon that's bonded to the magnesium as having essentially a full negative charge. And that's how it's going to behave when we react it with stuff. Okay. So let's talk about that right now. We said in the beginning that we can reduce carbonyls to alcohols using Grignard reagents. Here's why. If you look at any carbonyl, let's just look at, I don't know, this, for instance. Okay. These carbons are all, you know, just totally neutral, no charge, nonpolar bonds. But if we look at this carbon right here, this one, the one, the carbonyl carbon, it is delta positive because the oxygen is more electronegative than it and the oxygen is delta negative. So what happens if we bring these two guys together, uh, you get a pretty cool reaction where this carbon will attack that carbon, right? Full negative charge, delta positive charge, nucleophile attacks electrophile. So we're gonna get into that in a sec, but that's just an intro into why uh, Grignard reagents reduce carbonyls. Okay, so let's look at an, exa at an example. So 
So we're going to react this alkyl halide with uh, magnesium and diethyl ether to form our Grignard reagent. And now part B of the reaction, we're going to react it with a ketone. Hope you can see that. Okay, let's see how this happens. First things first, we don't need to know the mechanism for this because most OCHEM courses don't require that, so I won't waste your time. Um, but part A tells us to form the Grignard reagent, so that's what we're going to do. Right? Magnesium makes its way between the iodine and the carbon. That's our Grignard reagent. Uh, if, it, if it makes it easier for you, you can always erase this bond and make this magnesium a plus and this carbon a minus. I personally don't like it. I just like to remember that the carbon is nucleophilic and I usually just keep the bond there, but it's totally up to you. Just remember that this carbon is nucleophilic. Okay, uh, we're gonna introduce part B, right? We have our ketone with an electrophilic carbon right there. So we draw the arrow from the carbon magnesium bond to the electrophilic carbon, it attacks. Those electrons in the carbon oxygen bond, right, the carbonyl, get shot up to the oxygen. So now what do we have? We have something like this, right? Let's draw our skeleton. We have oxygen with one bond, negative charge. And then, sorry, uh, we have this new carbon-carbon bond, right? One, two, three carbons attached. So let's draw that. Uh, one, two, three carbons attached. Not the best way to draw it, but... So this, this is the substrate that we attach to this. Okay, see how that happened? But now we have an unhappy oxygen and we want to protonate it. But we can't protonate it because we require a polar acrotic solvent for Grignard. If you used a polar protic solvent for Grignard, uh, the dish would explode, uh, simply put. Grignard reagents are very reactive, and so you need polar acrotic. So how do we solve this problem of having an unhappy oxygen? We use workup. Workup means adding water just temporarily so that we could protonate this oxygen. Okay, so with workup, we'll introduce a water molecule, many water molecules, um, and this oxygen could deprotonate that water, okay? And that'll give us our final product. Remember, double arrows um, to indicate acid-base chemistry. Oops. So our final product will look something like this. We made an alcohol, a, a tertiary alcohol. Okay, that's our product. So we just reduced a carbonyl to an alcohol and specifically made a tertiary alcohol. You can make primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols uh, with Grignard. Okay, so that's Grignard reactions. I really hope that was helpful. Just remember that uh, Grignard reactions happen in polar acrotic solvent because the Grignard re reagent would just attack the polar protic solvent and the dish would explode. So remember to put it in polar acrotic, and then when it comes to protonating that oxygen, right, with one bond and a negative charge, you introduce water as workup. Okay, that's really important. Uh, so that's Grignard, and I really hope you gain something from that.